Welcome back to Big Dan's Air Gun Review Channel. Today we're looking at a gun that I've been wanting to look at for quite a while now, and we've had this requested to us quite a lot. And that is, as you can see in front of us, the one and only little Gamo Fox. Now this is not our gun. This gun's actually for sale on the website on behalf of the seller at this moment in time for £200. And after multiple attempts at begging, pleading, and then finally threatening to send naked pictures of myself to this person, they finally caved in and said, fine, you can review it. So. Let's take a look at the little Gamo Fox. Now we finally got one and see just what we think of it. First off, let's talk features. So the Gamo Fox, what do you get with this little rifle? As always, we start off at the rear of the gun where you can see a really nicely finished rubber recoil pad there. Slightly further forward, you can see the rifle does come in a synthetic stock with a lovely ambidextrous cheek piece. So lefties and righties are gonna quite enjoy this. You can also see the rifle's a bolt action and even for lefties, that bolt is gonna be miles away from your face. So it's gonna be easy enough to use. The stock is a thumb hole, as you can see here, and that leads us slightly further down to the grip, which does feature stippling. Slightly further up, we have the trigger, which is a two-stage adjustable unit that can be adjusted by a small screw just at the rear of the trigger blade. And you can also hopefully see the safety engaged with that little toggle tucked into the trigger blade itself. As we move up, you'll see that this is obviously a multi-shot gun. As we pan down, you'll see the magazine down here, which is very, very similar to what you'll find on a BSA. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Slightly further up, we have the barrel, which is a cold hammer forge unit from what I've seen. Great thing to have on a gun, especially considering that this was never an expensive gun to begin with. Back in the day, this is a Mark I Fox, and back in the day you could pick this up, I believe, with a pump, slip, scope, you name it, for about the £500 mark, so it'd get anybody into shooting. Slightly further along, you have another excellent feature, which is a proper half-inch UNF threaded barrel. They do come with a thread protector, but we've taken it off just to show that rifling off there. So. Overall, spec-wise, it is a fantastic little gun. It's got everything that you would possibly want on a, let's potentially say, hunting sort of styled rifle. There is one little niggle, which if we pan along to the front here, the pressure gauge, if you can see that, is right where you don't want it to be. But at the end of the day, it's not like it's a super duper expensive gun. Like we said, the guy's got it advertised on the site at the minute for just 200 quid. So. I'm sure you'll live with that, I'll put it that way. But that's it for features, but let's see, I wonder how heavy this little gun is, because it's quite petite looking, but is it petite in the shoulder? Let's find out. Okay, so she's on the scales and she comes out at 6.32 pounds. So she's a lovely lightweight little gun. So I'm thinking these dimensions, even with the scope on there and the silencer, she's not gonna be too bad. This is a proper little hunting gun, I think, that you can mooch around the fields with. But we don't wanna get ahead of ourselves, do we? We don't wanna jump ahead too soon. So let's put the little gun to the shoulder, chuck a scope on top and the silencer, as that's how most people are gonna be shooting this, and see what we think of it. Okay, so loading the mag. Another good little thing about this gun is that these mags are an absolute piece of cake to load. A little bit more fiddly than the magazines that you get with guns where the actions cycle the mags, but for a, a self-cycling magazine, as you should say, it actually is an absolute piece of cake. You don't have to load a pellet through the rear, nothing like that. You can see I've already loaded one in already. All you do, put your finger at the top of the rotor here and slide it back, and you can see it just opens up that pellet hole and simply load the pellet straight through the top like that. And you can see there that the, uh, the pellet itself will lock that magazine in place where you can easily pull your finger back, load your next one in, if I can grab it, load your next one in, and jobs are good. And what I will say as well, another neat little feature, you can see there you do have a pellet counter on the top. And this one, as you can see there, is, it looks like it's saying it holds 10 pellets. So that's it for loading the mag. Next up, let's move on to how it feels when the rifle's actually in your shoulder. So then, handling, what do we think of the little Gamo Fox? Well, first things first, what I'm gonna mention is I've been an idiot because if you take a look, most of the guns that we shoot or pre-charges we shoot on this channel, we load the mag through the top, so we have to use high scope mounts. And what you're gonna notice with this is that with this rifle, it's actually a feature I really like, instead of loading the mag through the side and you've got it poking out the top, you load it straight in here, close the bolt, 
And just like that, you can probably see you've got no magazine poking out the top. So you don't actually have to have high scope rails or mounts. Um, this is set up, I can't remember what the last review was that we put this on there, but I, we've used it for PCP reviews with the mags poking out the top. So basically I'm sat here now with high mounts that I didn't need. I could have had a lovely set of no, low mounts on there. So as the scope would have been really nice and close to the action. Now, what I will say is it doesn't matter too much because it actually plays a little bit into the Fox's strengths. Another thing I quite like that we mentioned a little bit already this cheek piece. Now, don't get me wrong, if I shoulder the gun as I normally would, you can probably see now I'm looking pretty much straight through the mount. However, the thing with this is you've got that nice tall cheek piece. So I can come up quite comfortably and get a consistent cheek weld on here. So it's still, even then, not really a problem. The gun's being designed out the box to basically be used with whatever sort of mount scope size you bloody well want which is nice. Now, let's talk about the stock and balance. We'll talk about balance first, and this gun is impossible to show you what it's really like because the trigger guard is so huge that it's just hitting my palm. If I put my palm here, it's, well, it's still resting on it. I've got to go like this where any gun's gonna tip backwards. If I had to guess, I'd say the weight is pretty much where you'd expect. It's almost dead center of the gun about here. You can see the nose is going down a tiny little bit, but like that, it's pretty much, if I let go, still tipping a bit, I'll be a bit further forwards, about in line with the mag, because you can see here now it's tipping back. So it's pretty much here. So pretty much spot on, really. The rifle is not a as light as a PR900 in the shoulder. Although that being said, nothing is. And I don't mean this in a disrespectful way. You guys know I love the PR900, but the PR900 is made of the world's finest Chineseium. Um, not even day state and air arms can figure out how they've come up with this new material. And basically, I know I've said it before, but people shoulder PR900s not to get consistent cheek welds and such on them, it's to stop them floating away. If Iron Man, Tony Stark, had made his Iron Man suit out of Chinesium, he wouldn't have even needed the jet engines in his hands. He would have just waited for a breezy day like today and off he went chasing the Hulk. But yeah, it's a nice feeling gun. It's not quite PR900 light, but it's still bloody well light enough. I'll put it this way. You could give it to say your 12 year old to have a range day with you or shoot in the back garden and he could shoulder it no problem at all. The dimensions are really nice as well. I'm not finding myself tucking in too much like some ball pups or anything like that. It comes up really, really nicely. In fact, I don't want to say too much yet because obviously we've not done any major testing. I would actually go as far as to say that this gun here could actually be a really good alternative to those that want a ballpup gun, but ballpups don't fit them, a bit like myself. You've, if you've seen my PR900, not PR900, the P15 reviews and the Kozak FC, the Kozak wasn't quite so bad, but I'm still sort of tucking in a little bit. With this, it's light as a feather, it's compact, and it just comes up really nicely. So let's talk about the trigger now. Pop that safety off. The safety is really nice. It's pretty much where we want it to be and it's designed the way it should be as well. And by that, it's simple to use. But the thing that I like about it is although it does pull into the trigger, it's not like the XS38 where you can see the lever will actually touch the trigger to turn it on. That was a big turn off for me. With this one, you simply like that and it's never gonna be near the blade. It's got a nice gap between them. Let's have a go at the trigger itself. So I'm just gonna have one quick squeeze. That first stage is crazy light. Okay, that's first stage. And we do have some creep on the second stage. What I'll say though, I'll just cock that again and just let you have a look. Now here you can see, you've got first stage. You can see me hitting the second stage there. But if you can see it, it sh hopefully it's consistent, it'll do it again. If I just put some weight on that trigger now, did you see that move? Then off it goes. It's a, the second stage is basically a heavier first stage. It creeps a little bit and then off she goes. Now it is a two stage adjustable trigger. So, and you've got two adjustments on there as well. Screw behind the blade, screw in the blade. I'm not tampering with it too much. Like I said, this is not my gun. Um, it's been very kindly sort of, uh, we've been allowed to play with it, shall we say. Um, but it's, it's usable. I'll put it this way. It's not gonna pull you off target. It's not gonna affect you if you're out hunting with it or anything like that. Now the trigger blade is plastic and you know, so is the safety. And you know, normally that would drive me wild. However, what I'm gonna say, I'm gonna sound like a hypocrite, but it's my honest opinion on this little gun. The gun was a package gun to begin with. It wasn't designed to take on a HW100. It wasn't, you couldn't buy the gun on its own for 500 quid. When you bought this gun for 500 pounds, well, in the day, or maybe even now, although I'm not sure if it's been replaced with the CF40 now, I'm not sure. Uh, the gun was 500 pounds with a pump, scope, rifle slip, mounts, pellets. 
it was a package gun. And for that, considering the barrel that you've got on there, which we're going to test later, the barrel, the stock's nice, the bolt action's nice. The trigger being plastic, we can let it get away with it this time. If they had to do that to keep the cost as low as possible to get guys into the sport, hopefully, with everything they'll need to start shooting a pre-charge, hats off to them, really. But overall, handling-wise, I'm a pretty happy chappy, I'll put it that way. But how many shots are you going to get out of this gun? Because that cylinder is quite small, if you can see that. And on top of that, it's not regulated. So it could be a little bit interesting. I've seen figures online tend to go between, say, 50 and 70 full power shots, but we'll find out in a minute. So we're going to get the chronograph cracked out, put a few shots down it, and see just what the little gun can do. OK, so the chronograph is set up. The rifle has had a refill. We pan the camera around. Hopefully, if we can do it the right way, you can see the needle is pretty much right in the red there. The pellets we're going to be using are the JSB Exact 15.89 grains, and as always, the camera is going to be looking straight into the chronograph, where you're going to be getting a live report as to what the gun's doing. As always, we're going to be looking for power, consistency, and shot count. So, let's see what the little fox is capable of. Okay, so chronograph report over, what do we think? Well, it's a consistent little gun. It's not gonna set the world on fire. Pay no attention to where it says spread 38. As you know, we shot the gun till it basically gave up. The spread was more or less in the 20s, or is roughly what you can expect from a fill. And as we said, we did fill the rifle to absolute maximum. So it's not a massive surprise. And we did get a couple of errors, unfortunately, to begin with, but it's not a huge surprise that we did have a couple of spiking shots, like here, 1199. Most unreg guns like these, you're not going to want to take them to absolute max fill. Ideally, you're going to want to take it to about 180 bar because that's where most of them shoot straight. And from what we can see here, that's pretty much the same as what we got. Now, I would say roughly you're going to get around 50 full power shots out of these. This is a 2.2, as I'm sure you can tell, uh, or if we haven't mentioned it already. And you can see here, by the 50th shot, you're still in the 11 feet pound mark. But then after that, it does start to leapfrog and start uh, coming down. It does actually start doing this a little bit earlier here, 10.71. To be fair, that shot there could simply be because the pellets are straight out the tin, and we are using the 15.89 um, JSBs. Fantastic pellet, maybe not the best when it comes to consistency, sometimes, depending on batch. I mean, that could simply be a case of that, but 50 shots from a full fill, and it wasn't a case as though you had a massive power surge either. I mean, the main power you had was right at the maximum fill of the gun which most people aren't going to do. With some unregulated guns, you'll see, if anything, they might start a little bit low and then they'll start to creep up and then fall back down again. Whereas this, you had the hot few shots, but then she was pretty much flat through most of it. You can see, I think back here somewhere, we had quite a few, it was just 11.51, 11.55, 11.3, 11.5, 11.3, 11.4. It's a fairly consistent gun. So what we're gonna do is we're going to give it another juice up. We're gonna take it to 180 bar this time, not the 2.32. We're going to give it another juice up, and what we're going to do is we're going to get the targets out and see just what this little gun can do downrange. So we're going to get a manner of different pellets, cheaper ones, more expensive ones, you name it. And we'll see just what you can expect out of the little Gamo Fox. So, time to pack the chrono away. We've done the boring bit. Now it's time to have a bit of fun. Okay, so it's accuracy testing time. The rifle has been filled up to 180 bar, which is about pretty much bang on the sweet spot. As we pan down, you'll see we've got a selection of pellets here. We also have, you can't see it at the minute, but there is just there, hopefully you can see. We've got two tins of JSB. That's the standard JSB exact jumbo 15.89s. And here are the jumbo express or jumbo RS pellets coming out at 13.43. We've got a bit of a mixture. You can see here the H&N Barracuda Hunter Extremes. We've got some Norma Golden Trophy FTs the Webley Acupel, and as we move up, you've got some Crossman Premiers at 14.3. We've also got some of the cheaper gear, the Rifle Diablo STRs, you can see some of the new SMK Spitfires there as well, and slightly further up, the Rifle Premium series. So a fair smattering of pellets to try through it, ranging from budget to the more premium gear. The target is set up, you can see that white board there, we're gonna be putting the target just in front of that, at roughly our 37 yard mark. You can see here, we've pushed 
myself pretty much as my back's against the wall really um, and we're going to have a few shots rested off the backpack so we're going to have five shots with each pellet tin and see how the gamo fox does when it's actually put down range the wind is not the best hopefully you can see that through the, the uh, camera it is starting to blow a little bit now uh, but we're going to put a few shots down range and just see if we can shoot through it or just see if we can sort of plan around it sort of thing so i'll do what i can but if we get a couple of flyers it could be me or it could be the wind something like that so we'll see what we can do and let's see what the little fox can do down range okay guys just a quick uh, bit of footage for you we've taken the lapel mic so hopefully you can hear just how much the wind is blowing here today it's a beautiful looking day but just looking at that tree will show you and hopefully you can hear the wind billowing into the uh, the camera itself it's not going to make for the best day shooting unfortunately but we'll see what we can get done and just see what the little rifle can do regardless so that was just a quick heads up and we'll get back to it now Okay, so accuracy test results. What do we think of the Gamo Fox at 37 yards in this absolutely, if you can see that tree blowing down there, 
miserable weather for shooting, um, despite the beautiful sunshine. Well, I'm pretty damn impressed. Again, you have to bear in mind the conditions this little gun is shooting in today. I think, uh, and I've said this in other videos when we've had windy weather, but it is the truth. You could have any rifle on the planet down here, and I honestly don't think it's going to do any better than what this little gun did today. Starting off with what's in front of us, the Crossman Premiers. These are the 14.3 grain Ultra Magnum pellets, which is interesting because they're actually quite light for a 2.2. But moving the 20 pence piece up, you can see she sits under the 20 quite nicely with one pellet going low. Could be a myriad of re reasons why that pellet is there, but it could be me, gun, weather, who knows. Overall though, pretty damn impressive, as we said, given the conditions. Slightly further up, we're going to get the very similar Webley Accupel pellets, which, let's try the 20 pence. Nope, didn't do quite as well as the It's Crossman Brethren, but still not terrible given the conditions. We've got three shots out of five sitting under that 20 pence piece. Not too bad. Probably wouldn't hunt with it like that, but acceptable, I'll put it that way, given what we're dealing with. JSB Exact Jumbo 15.89. Now these will almost fit under, not quite though, almost fit under the five pence piece. If we get that out of the way, get the 20 pence. And again, this is rested on the backpack, of course, and as you can tell, shooting outside in the miserable wind. Not bad at all, easily fits under a 20 pence piece. That I would say you could definitely hunt with. Slightly further afield, we have the Diablo Rifle STR pellets, which I'm not even gonna bother getting a coin because they was miserable. And slightly further up, we have the JSB Exact Jumbo RS. Now these, compared to their slightly full fat cousins, did suffer quite a bit more in this weather. If we get the five pence, you can see there's, oh, hang on, it's a little bit difficult here. Get the five pence piece, you can see there's absolutely no chance in hell that you're gonna call that a 5P group. We might be able to get it under a 20. Mm, nearly, not quite. You can see on the edges there, it's tufting out just a tiny little bit. It's almost a 20 pence group. You probably could almost hunt with that, but I'd ha I wouldn't take it to 30 yards, i put it that way. But again, we are shooting outside with a gun that's not, let's say, American power. We're dealing with about 11 and a half average feet pounds, I believe, off memory. So next up, we're taking a look at the rifle premiums. Now with these, I will explain, you might have noticed I had more than five shots. The reason for that is it wasn't really fair to try and get a group with the first couple of shots, because you can see they do drop quite a bit. And the reason for that, they come out at 18.67 grains on the tin and rifle are lying to you. They're nowhere near that. They're actually more like 19.2 grain. They're a, they're a heavy old pellet. We had a couple of shots that hit the frame, then after that you can see I came up, and with that, if I can get the five pence, you can see we've got one shot went a bit low, could be me, again, could be anything. The rest of them, now that might be three or four, I'm not sure, I'm going to let you guys make up your mind on that one, but that fits beautifully under a 5 piece. These are definitely worth a try, but just bear in mind, like I said, more like 19, 1, 19, 2 than 18.67, but pretty damn impressive. The poor old Normas, however, not quite so impressive. They're a little bit all over the place, a hell of a vertical spread on the go. Uh, to be fair, they're actually, when it comes to customer reports and when we've done tests with them here, I think with the Cometa Orion, they group bloody lovely, going off memory. They're a cracking pellet, and if you can find them, don't get me wrong, they're not a full tin. In the 177, you get 300, and the 22, it's 200 or 250. But they're a really, really good and well-made pellet. They're quite similar to an RWS Superfield, but I don't know, I, I, they seem to be quite, they're a bit heavier at 17.6, and they do shoot really well. The thing that I do like about them, and this is where JSB falls down, is that I've not really found any misshapen pellets in any of the tins that I've looked at. They're a lot more solid skirted, so you guys with higher power levels across the sea might actually have better results than what I get with them. Obviously, lower power is not gonna open the skirt quite so much into the rifling, but, you guys with higher power, we get bloody good results with them most of the time anyway. You guys give them a go if you can find them and let, you, let me know how you do, because I think they could be winners. And then we have the Barracuda Hunter Extreme, which is not quite so bad as the uh, Normas on this instance, but they're still not great. Again, that could simply be because the weather's blowing about all over the place. The range is, with this particular type of not particularly aerodynamic head, it might simply be losing a bit too much energy at the range we're shooting at with the power levels that we're dealing with. But the one that I don't think anybody would have guessed, I certainly didn't guess it was gonna do this well. I mean, we chucked the, the cheaper pellets in because you never know, and here you can see why we do it. Take a look at the SMK Spitfires. Now this is a five pence piece, and it's just pretty much devoured 
buy that five pence piece. And again, as we said, outdoors in this miserable wind, maybe got, we got lucky with the wind, who knows? But that is freaking excellent. And it goes to show these barrels really, I wish we had better weather conditions. These barrels you can see are not really pellet fussy at all. You've got a fair, fair few fairly good groups you can see coming out here and you couldn't pick more different pellets. Like we said, JSB, heavyweight rifles, and even these uh, cheapo SMK Spitfires, you're looking about seven quid a tin. What I will say is if you're buying a tin of Spitfires, make sure it's the updated version. Like you can see one of the pellets here and obviously there's the full tin in there. You can see one of the pellets here. Now the older pellets, I'm not too shy to say, were some of the worst pellets that I'd ever tested in my life. The new ones, however, are genuinely very good and worth a try. So make sure if you can pop a tin open, make sure that they look like this and they're not dark gray with wasted skirts. So accuracy wise, as well, with quite a few of the reviews so far, I'm a very, very happy chappy, especially when you put into consideration what this poor little gun's had to deal with. If I just pan up now, you can see the, the wind's blowing these trees. And if you can see them, the stinging nettles down there, they've eased off a bit now, but they was blowing like crazy. That's it for accuracy testing. So let's I think it's now probably time to wrap this up and see just what we think of the Gamo Fox. I thought we'd uh, do a little bit more shooting with the Fox before we give up and uh, give myself an opportunity to further embarrass myself. So we have got a fresh target in the card holder here. And what I thought was, you probably guessed you're on uh, hat cam at this moment in time if i look down hopefully you can see there's our shadow there and there's you sitting on top of my head so there's a pretty image for all of you out there Whoop, and there you go straight off of my head because of the wind is blowing quite badly at the moment but yeah what we're going to try and do is have a couple of shots into the target that hopefully you can see there and see roughly where it ends up with a few shots freestanding so i'm going to have a mooch over there somewhere don't know how far say 30 ish yards something like that and we'll have a few shots and see how we get on with the little fox. So, let's see how much I can embarrass myself. Oh, fluff that one. Let's go take a look. So that was another five, I believe. Gun is safe. Let's take a look. How much have we embarrassed ourselves today? So, first things first, hopefully you can see this. We've got one awful one down here. The rest, however, we've got three almost touching there with one going just a little bit low. 
Got no idea what's going on with the shot off. There's a tear on the left there. I think that's a shot. I think that's just maybe where it's torn where we put the target in. But that's three shots in a line, one underneath and one way down low, which I'm pretty 100% confident was me just pulling it when I shouldn't have done. So I think she's ready for, uh, for hunting, don't you? Okay, so final verdict time. What do we like, what don't we like? Well, you know we're a bit of a negative Nancy, so we're gonna talk about what we don't like first. The trigger's plastic. It's okay in operation. It's not a record unit. It's not, in my opinion, as good as the Artemis M16 unit. But, I mean, I've not tampered with this one. As we've said earlier, it's not my gun. It's a customer's gun that they very kindly said, yes, you can review it. Thank you ever so much for that, Rupert. Uh, but yeah, it's not my gun. We've not adjusted the trigger. It's a very, it's fairly consistent, very consistent unit, but this, it's not really at the moment a second stage. You, hopefully you could see earlier that the second stage kind of moves a bit and then it fires, but it's not like the Rotex where we tested where it was one minute it was crisp and the next minute you'd have creep. This consistently creeps, but not in a bad way. That makes it sound worse than what it really is. Um, other than that, what don't I like about this? I don't like the way it caught me off guard with the mag poking out the side instead of on top, but that's just me being petty because I'm an idiot and didn't think about that at the time. Um, the shot count is not the best. It is a very small cylinder on this gun. Hopefully you can see that. You're getting around 50 full power shots. This is the 2.2. You're getting around 50 full power shots from a 200 bar fill. Granted, Maxwell is 232 bar. Usually the sweet spot with an unregulated gun, you're talking around 180 bar down to about 120, 110. And you can see if we go down, the shots are a bit erratic at, even at the 200 bar fill. You can see we had 11.99 there, 11.75. And then it does settle quite nicely to pretty much bob on 11 and a half feet pounds, as you can see there. It's a 50 full power shot gun. If you're looking at this as a range gun and you haven't got a bottle and you don't like pumping guns up, don't look at the Fox because you're going to be 50 pellets. You can run through it when you're having fun quite a lot. It's only five mags. So you're going to be running through that and pumping that up a hell of a lot. And they're a great little gun. So I know you are going to be shooting it a hell of a lot. However, if you're a hunter, which is why I'm grinning as I'm saying this, this is a gun you need to look into, especially if you want something on a budget, knock a few pigeons down or something like that. It's bloody accurate. You can see here, here's our shots rested at 37 yards. The weather was atrocious, beautiful, but atrocious. It's still sort of blowing a bit now, but hopefully the lapel mic's blocking that out. And that's with SMK Spitfires of all things. And you can see there, it sits, oh, if I can get that right, because it's sort of overlapping that side. There we go. It sits under a five pence piece. No one is gonna turn their nose up at that. I then decided to have a go in my infinite wisdom at unrested freestanding shooting at about 30 yards. You might be able to make out in the video we stood, I think it's pretty much in line with that staunching of the barn, maybe a tiny little bit back off memory. And even then, for someone who does not practice freestanding shooting at all and is used to heavy guns, we had three shots dead on under the five pence piece. One shot went slightly low and one shot, we won't talk about that one. But yeah, the shots that missed, I'm 100% positive was me, not the rifle. But you can see there the potential the gun has. If this was being used by someone who knew what they was doing, I am very confident that these shots would be in that cluster there. Unfortunately, you've got me shooting for you on these reviews, so you're never gonna know what uh, someone who can shoot, who knows what they're doing is capable of with these guns. Uh, but yeah, it's a lovely little gun. As a hunter, you've got everything you want. You've got the half inch UNF threaded barrel on there. You can see the crow silencer poking out of there now. I do recommend the silencer. The barrel is not that long and you do get a bit of a crack with that one. The stock is also really quite nice. The stippling is a bit thin, but at the same time, it's better than some of the other offerings we've had on there. I would rather have that than what you get on a PR900, I'll put it that way, or the um, Artemis, the M11, which I think we said on the video, it's you can see it, but you can't really feel it sort of thing. With this, you, you get a little bit of traction off of it, but I don't think it's really gonna make that much of a difference. The cheek piece is lovely. And like we said, she's ambidextrous, so the lefties can have some fun with the Fox. And on top of that, the bolt action you can see is not gonna go anywhere near your face. That is a particularly sweet little action as well. The bolt is fairly smooth as silk to pull. It gets a little bit stiffer as you're pulling back, but it's not even really worth complaining about or mentioning. It's not rough, not even close. The magazine is quite nice. It's easy to load. I like the fact that you put it in through the side and not through the top, like a lot of guns. And it's just in general, as a hunting package, and you've got to bear in mind, like we said, we said the trigger was plastic, but it was always a package deal gun to begin with. As a hunting package, 
you're not going to get much better. I've got to tell you the truth. Especially these, you can pick them up secondhand. I mean, this one, um, a, a good friend of mine, Rupert, has uh, had this advertised on our website now, and he's very kindly given us the permission to review it. Thank you ever so much for that, Rupert. This one, he's only asking about 200 quid for, obviously without the scope and the silencer. But even so, it is a stonking little gun at that money. And you can find them online, 250 odd quid, 275, with something like a, like a little cheapo scope on top and things like that. But it's more than enough to get you going. If you're after a knockabout PCP that's accurate as heck and has got a genuinely nice feel to it, stock, trigger's genuinely not bad, a bit of creep, but definitely take a look at a Gamo Fox. I don't know why these little guns, they've not got the best reputation for some reason, what I've seen online. From what I've seen today, this is not deserved at all. It is a bloody sweet little gun, it really is. And we genuinely look forward to it. If we do get any other Gamos coming, such as the Coyote and things like that, next time we get a few in, we've got to get them reviewed because they deserve it, I'll put it that way. But anyways, thanks ever so much for watching. We won't ramble on any longer. I am a big fan of the Gamo Fox, and if you're thinking about one, definitely see if you can give it a try. That's what I'm going to say. Thanks ever so much for watching. We'll be back soon with another PCP review. I'll say it right in a minute, review. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. Take care.